Okay, starting from our from our solution from the energy and mass balance equations, we have to do one more thing, and that was calculate the entropy uh, change for a heat exchanger. And then we're going to circle back to the actual simpler case of the countercurrent heat exchanger. So similarly, we have entropy in the control volume at some time t plus delta t minus the entropy in the control volume at some previous time point t it's going to be equal to the the entropy that comes in from flow so the mass flow rate uh, and stream let's just stick with stream one for this um, times the entropy in that uh, mass flow rate to, uh, times delta t minus the amount uh, leaving so this is a SL plus delta L. Um, let's be consistent with before. Okay. Uh, uh, times the time interval delta T plus the entropy generation uh, that is uh, that is uh, coming um, due to the um, the heat transfer between the streams. So we have this Q dot over the temperature term times the interval of time and the interval of length of which it's happening. So this is that steady state again. So there's going to be no entropy change in that little uh, control volume as a function of time. And so we're going to use this to rearrange our entropy balance equation. We're going to use M1 dot and we're going to rearrange SL plus delta L uh, minus s uh, um, at L as it com comes into the system um, and this is going to be equal to the, um, the the heat transfer that's that's occurring in stream in stream one so this is going to be equal to Q I mean yeah which is Q times temperature 2 minus temperature 1 all occurring at um, that uh, temperature T1 for stream 1. So this becomes, um, uh, this is times delta L. So take the limit of um, delta L goes to zero. We're going to end up with mass flow rate dS dL um, equals this uh, K times T2 minus T1 all divided by T1. Okay. Luckily, we've already solved for all of these terms um, already in our energy balance equation. So this becomes mostly an exercise of, of calculus. So if we make the substitutions in here, we're going to have a bunch of... A bunch of um, exponentials and things from our previous solution. So we have M ds uh, dl is going to be equal to minus kappa times 50 exp times minus l by l0 all divided by 10 plus 25 times exp minus L by L0. But we have to adjust uh, now that we're working with entropy into um, absolute uh, uh, into absolute uh, temperature instead of working in the Celsius units. So we're going to have to make this adjust this to 273.15. Okay. Um, so the, this this canceled out on, on the terms above because you you add it and then you subtract it so it doesn't appear there it only appears in the denominator for t1 okay so now we can separate the variables and uh, begin to solve this problem so we're going to have um, ds on this side is equal to minus 50 times 50 times k times L0, all divided by the mass flow rate M, times EXP of minus L by L0, all divided by 
283.15 plus 25 EXP minus L by L0. And we'll just do this uh, derivative with respect to D by L or DL by L0. It doesn't matter because L0 is a constant, the derivative of the constants. It just multiplies through. Okay. When it's in a product, the derivative of a constant is zero, but if it's added, but if it's just multiplied through, it just pulls out the derivative. Okay. Um, so then when you calculate this integral, you end up with S L minus S um, uh, L equals zero. It's a definite integral. Is equal to CP, the natural log of 283.15 plus 25 EXP to the minus L by L0 all divided by 308.15. So this is now this the, the entropy that um, relative to the entry entropy at any point uh, in this device. And what this isn't useful on its own, but it is useful for comparison's sake. So this could be useful when comparing the entropy generation in, in your device um, against, uh, against a, a counter current or other type of design example.